Hi, welcome to Hopscotch. This is an app where you can make games, movies, art, tools, websites, you name it. In this video, we're going to make a really fun game that's like Geometry Dash. We also have tons of other videos in Hopscotch, like how to make cool animations with emoji, a two-person fighter game that you can check out later. But now, let's dive in. So right now you're in the editor. This is where you make everything in Hopscotch. Think of it as your workshop. You see that green button in the top right corner? That's the play button. So tap that. So this is the playing project. And as you can see, nothing's here because we haven't done anything yet. As we make our game, we can use the play button to see the progress we've made. If this seems hard, don't worry. It's super easy and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's tap on the edit button on the top right corner to go back to our editor. See this little plus sign here? This opens up our objects menu. We're going to build Geometry Dash by telling these objects what to do. So I'm going to have my hero be an emoji. So let's grab a text object on the top and drag it onto the screen, somewhere around the middle of the left side. So this screen that just popped up is where you can decide what your text will be called. Since I want it to be an emoji, I'm going to tap on the emoji keyboard to the left of the space bar. And when you do that, you should see a ton of emoji. So you can pick any emoji you want, but I'm going to pick the black and white square, which you can find on the very right end of the emoji menu. And if you need a moment to pick your emoji, you can always pause the video. Once you've picked your emoji, press the green done button, and you should see it in your editor. Now press the play button to see what it looks like in the finished project. Cool. So let's go back to edit. Now let's make our square do something. So first, let's make it bigger. So tap add a new rule, and rules tell your objects what to do and when to do them. So in this case, we want it to get bigger at the very beginning of the project. So pick when the play button is tapped. And we want it to be bigger, which is under looks and sounds, which is the green tab. So tap on looks and sounds and drag out a set size block. And 100 in this bubble would mean the normal size that you already saw. What we want is for it to be twice as big, so let's tap in 200%. And press check. And then to check and see what it looks like, you can tap on the play button. So let's do that. Whoa, twice as big. That's a beautiful size, so let's keep going. So let's tap on the edit button again. So now let's make our hero jump. So exit out of this rule, which you can do by tapping outside of it. And let's make sure he's on the left side of the screen, maybe a little closer to the bottom. Just about there, that's great. Um, now let's add a new rule. So this rule is going to say that when we tap the iPad, our square is going to jump. So for our when, let's pick iPad is tapped. And now to jump, that's a type of movement. So let's tap on the red movement tab. And let's pick change Y by. Changing Y is how you move up and down in Hopscotch. So we want to pick the change Y by block in order to move up. So now let's move up like 150, which is a pretty decent distance. And let's press play and see what happens. So when you tap on the iPad, it goes up, which is great, but that's only half the jump. We need it to also go down. So let's go back to edit. And in this same rule, let's add one more block. And let's drag out a change Y block, put it under the first one. And here, let's put in negative 150. So if you change Y by a minus number, then it will go down. Now let's see what happens. Press play. Whoa, um, wow, you can jump, that's super cool. Let's keep going. So tap on edit again. So we have a working jumper, and now let's give it something to jump over. So we're gonna add an obstacle. So let's exit out of this rule by tapping outside of it. And let's go back to that objects menu to pick our obstacle. So go to the objects menu and pull out another text object. And you can use anything you want, but I'm going to pick the spike as my obstacle, which is an emoji. So tap on the emoji button to the left of the space bar, and all the way on the right end of the emoji menu is a red spike that points up. I'm going to pick that. Um, then let's press done, and let's move it over to the right side of the screen 
So we have our obstacle, and now we need it to look like it does in the finished game. And it seems like there are a bunch of spikes here, but actually there's a very cool hack we're going to use, where we only use one spike, and we have it move in a loop that makes it look like there are many. So this hack has a few steps. First, we need to make the obstacle bigger, then we need to get it in the right place, and then it's going to move left across the screen, and once it hits the left side of the screen, it's going to reappear on the right side of the screen and move left again. And that will happen repeatedly. So if that sounds overwhelming, don't worry, I got you. We're going to do this together. So let's break it down together. And let's actually move the square up so it's level with our spike. Great, let's play the game and see what happens. Okay, so the square is really big, but the spike's not. So let's make the spike bigger. So go back to edit, and let's add a new rule. So just like the square, we're going to pick when the play button is tapped. And this rule is going to make the spike bigger, which is under looks and sounds. So go down to the green tab, and tap looks and sounds, and then drag out a set size block. And let's set the size to 200. Press check, and let's play, see what it looks like. Okay, that's the sort of spike I'm talking about. So now let's have it start at the right side of the screen. So let's go back to edit. So to set something to a specific position, we're going to use a set position block, which you can find under the red movement tab, which is above the green looks and sounds tab. So open that up and look for a set position block. If you don't see it, you might have to tap more in your movement menu. There we go, set position. And now you see two bubbles. In Hopscotch, we tell our objects where to go by using X and Y axes. The X axis goes from left, which is 0, all the way to the right, which is 1024. The Y axis goes from the bottom of your iPad, Y equals 0, all the way to the top. At any moment, you can describe where an object is by saying it's X and Y position. So let's set our spike to be on the right end of the screen at the same height as the square. So pick x equals 1024, and then y, so tap on the y bubble to pick its height, and you might have to guess a couple times, but let's try 400, and let's see what that looks like. If your square isn't lined up with the triangle, you might have to change that y coordinate or you might want to move your square up to where the triangle is. Um, so now let's make our spike move left across the screen. So go back to edit, and here let's drag out a change x by block and put it under the set position. And let's change by negative 1024. Cool, and let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's so cool. That's amazing. Um, wow, awesome. All right, we're getting there. So now let's have the spike keep doing this over and over again. So let's go back to edit. So let's have the spike keep doing this over and over again. And we can do that by putting these blocks in a repeat forever loop. This block says anything within it will continue to happen over and over again until you close the game. So to find the repeat loop, let's go down to the blue control flow tab. And open that up and drag out a repeat forever loop. And let's drag the set position and change x by blocks into the repeat forever loop in that order. So make sure this is the order your blocks are in. So now this says that this will happen, and then it will happen again, and then it will happen again, on and on until you stop playing. So let's see if that happens. Oh my god, cool! We got it working! Okay, so this is super fun, but it's a little boring because we know exactly when the spike will come. It's always at the same time. Um, so let's make it a little more tricky by having the spike come at a little more random, unpredictable times. So the way we're going to do that is that once the spike hits the left edge of the screen, we're going to have it wait a random amount of time. Then you won't really know when the next spike is coming, and that'll keep you on your toes. 
So let's go back to edit. Now go to the control flow tab and you should see a block called weight. So let's drag that out so it's under everything. Inside the repeat loop though, but under change x by. And let's tap on that bubble that you see 500 and let's put in a random block, which should be under your number keypad. Cool. So this picks a range of numbers that you might be waiting by. So let's make that range anywhere from 0 to 1000. So tap 0 for the first bubble, type 0, then for the, tap on the second bubble and pick 1000. And this just means one second. It's 1000 milliseconds. Then press check and let's play. Nice. Okay, so this is cool, but there seems to be a problem. Once the spike gets to the left edge of the screen, it just hangs out there, and we don't want that to happen. Instead, once that spike gets to the left edge of the screen, we should have it disappear and not reappear until it's on the right edge of the screen. So let's go back to Edit, and let's go up to the green Looks and Sounds tab, and you should find a block called Set Invisibility. Let's drag that right above the weight block. And let's set it to 100, which means fully invisible. Now let's see what happens. Cool, it's gone. Except it never comes back. Do you know why? Because we never set it back to 0% invisible. So we're gonna have to do that now. So go back to edit, and drag out another set invisibility block and drag it above the change x by. And here, set it to zero. So this means when the loop goes again, it will become visible again after it's been set to the right side of the screen. Pause here and make sure that your code is in the same order as mine. That's really important. And if it is, then let's play. Nice, now we've added some unpredictability and this isn't the easiest game in the world anymore. Except that if you don't jump, then nothing happens and that's a problem. So we need to add a collision rule. So let's go back to edit. So let's add a rule where when the square bumps the spike, it explodes and the game is over. So to do that, let's exit out of this rule. And let's add, and let's tap on the square or your hero, and let's give it a new rule. So type, so tap add a new rule, and here our when is going to be different. It's going to be when the square bumps the spike. So you want to tap more in the when's menu, and you want to look for blank bumps blank. And then the two things you want are your hero and your obstacle. So for the first bubble, pick your hero, and then tap on the second bubble, and then pick your obstacle. Great, now press check. So when this happens, when the two things collide, we want it to explode and then turn invisible. So go to looks and sounds. So to explode, we're gonna to go to looks and sounds and we're gonna pull out a set text block. And here, I'm going to use the explosion emoji, which is under the keyboard, which is that keyboard symbol under the number pad. So tap on that, and then remove the new text by pressing back, and then go to emoji, and scroll until you find the explosion emoji, and it should be under the celebration tab. All right, press done. Now press play, let's see what happens. So, so if you don't jump, cool, it turns, it explodes, but it stays there. So we need to set it invisible. <laughs> okay, so go back to edit. Let's drag out another block, which is a set invisibility block right under this. And then type in 100. So now it's completely invisible. So press check and let's play. Cool, so the problem though is that it became invisible right after it turned into the explosion emoji. You didn't see it long enough to understand what just happened, so we're gonna have to add one more block. So let's go to edit, and in between these two, we're gonna add a weight block, which is under the blue control flow tab. 
So drag out a weight block in between these two and wait like, uh, I don't know, 300 milliseconds? And let's see what it looks like. All right, so this is a cool game, but it's not very pretty, is it? That white background just feels a little unfinished. So we can add a simple background to make it look a little bit more profesh. So let's do that. So tap on Edit, and let's exit out of this rule. And let's go to our Objects menu and add a new character that will draw our background. So remember, the Objects menu is under the gray plus button. And drag out any character you want to be our artist that draws our background. OK, so what Stargirl is going to do is she's first going to draw a giant dot that will cover the screen in the color of your choice. Then she will position herself right here on the bottom leftish part of the screen. And then she will draw a line, a thick line, of another color of your choice across the screen to be the floor. So let's do those things. So add a new rule for Stargirl. And pick when the play button is tapped, because we want the background immediately. And let's go to the drawing tab. And drag out a block called leave a trail. Um, so leave a trail has a couple components. The first is you can pick the color you want your line to be. You can pick how thick or thin that line will be. And then you can move within this block and literally leave a trail with these characteristics. So pick your color by tapping on the color bubble. And then we want to draw a line that's actually a giant dot that covers the screen. So let's make the width 3,000. So tap on the width bubble and then pick 3,000. And then go to the move forward bubble and just put one because this isn't even really a line. It's just a giant dot. Um, and then let's see what that looks like. Awesome. Okay, so I definitely don't want Stargirl in the game. So let's make her invisible. So go to edit and go down to the looks and sounds tab, the green tab, drag out a set invisibility and drag it above all of this. And let's set it to 100 to be completely invisible. And now, after she drew that background, we want her to be on the left side of the screen, near the bottom, and to draw another line across the screen. Let's go to our red movement tab. And let's drag out a set position. And let's drag it under the leave a trail. And let's set it to the left kind of lower. So the first bubble for X, let's put 0. And for the second bubble, tap on the second bubble, let's pick 200, which is already what it is. And then press check. And then let's leave our, our final trail. So go down to the leave a trail. Let's drag out a leave a trail block under this. So pick the color you want your floor to be. Great, and then let's make the width 400. And then let's move forward, which is the length of the line, 1024, which is the length of the screen. So tap on the move forward button, bubble, and then type in 1024. Press check, and let's see what it looks like. Cool. Okay, so we don't want that floor to be drawn so slowly, so let's go back to edit. Oh, so let's go to the movement tab, and let's drag out a set speed block and drag it above everything. And let's set it to 9,000. And this way it'll draw the line really quickly. So press check and let's see what happens. Cool. Awesome. You just coded your very first game. This is huge. From here, there are a million different directions you can take your project. Check out the community to see some examples of other people's games. You can search Geometry Dash to see them. Now you can publish your project to the community for kids around the world to see, remix, and comment on. And you can always download it again to keep working on it and make new versions. Congrats on being a baller and have fun.